Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine. This month I'm going to tie Danny Lane's DJL Drake. It's a really cool extended body green drake pattern. It's a fly that I've had a lot of fun fishing. You've seen it in the June-July issue of the magazine or you can just watch right now and I'll tie one up for you. This is a pretty cool pattern and uh, kind of takes some cues from some older patterns and some some uh, with a few new little twists as well and uh, one of the things that I like most about it and what makes it stand out from everything else um, are these rubber legs. Um, green drakes especially, uh, but gray drakes and brown drakes as well, um, have a pretty robust thorax and uh, have these big burly legs that have always sort of been a, a prominent feature on them. And uh, Danny has figured out a way to incorporate those into this fly um, in a pretty unique way um, along with the the wing and hackle situation we've got going on here so um, this is not an easy fly to figure out so uh, Danny's been kind enough to share uh, share the recipe and uh, a few little tips on tying it with me and I'll try to tr try to relay those to you as we go so um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take that fly out of the vise and I'm going to start with just a sewing needle in my vise, like so. I'll move this up just a bit. And I've got the pointy end out here. And what I want to do is I'm going to take some uh, 30 denier Simperfly Nano Silk, and I'm using yellow here. I'm going to tell you a green version. Um, and what I'll do here is I'm going to start this thread on the needle and I want to get a good solid jam knot on there, but I want to leave a long tag end. Uh, this tag end is going to become important. Um, and this is something I sort of added to Danny's fly. Um, just in my experience with uh, extended bodies, uh, this is a good way to do this to kind of take out some of this slack that we're going to put in uh, on the inside here. Um, so I'm going to leave that tag end and I'll just drape it back and clip it in my material spring on my vise. From there, I'm going to take, um, you know, you can use any variety of materials for this part, for the extended body. Uh, Danny uses deer hair, and he apparently has a much better chunk of deer hair than I have on hand. So uh, what I'm going to use is some elk rump, um, and uh, this is just dyed green, um, elk rump. And elk rump is a very long hair um, that's fairly coarse and doesn't flare a whole lot. Um, and uh, honestly, it's, it's just ideal for flies like this. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll take... A pretty large clump of hair and I want to clean it out you know obviously it's going to have a bunch of under fur and short hairs in it I want to clean that all out as best I can and get all the short stuff out and one of the advantages of, of this hair being so long um, is it makes it easy to get the, the stuff that's shorter than than average out of the group uh, and then I'll always kind of go through and see if I've got any broken tips I do see a few in there but those will those will come out after I stack um, so again, I've got a pretty good size, pretty good size clump here um, of this hair. It takes a little more than you think, and I'm going to take this and put it in my stacker, and I'll tamp that down a few times and kind of get that evened up. Um, and I do sort of spend a fair amount of time making sure to get these broken tips out. I try to get all of them because they do end up showing on the finish fly and that's just something that's particularly irritating to me so I'm going to try to get them out of there and I'm certain that makes no difference to the fish but makes a lot of difference to me so so you have to put up with me while I do that. Um, so once I've got those broken tips out um, I'll restack that one more time and hopefully I got all of them I can see that I didn't but I'll keep trying. Persevere we get it just right. So I've got this little clump of hair now and what I want to do is I've got a, a, a ruler here on my on my desk next to me. I'm going to measure this just short of three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm going to measure that clump of hair and just to make things fit on the screen a little better here um, I'm going to take and trim these butt ends just a bit. I'll get my measurement one more time like so. Um, so we want just short of three quarters of an inch here. And what I'll do is I'm going to put this hair down on the hook and I'm going to take two turns around it with the thread and then flare those butt ends. And I'll make about 10 turns right here just to anchor that down 
to the uh, to the needle. I may have said a hook before, but obviously this is a needle. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm gonna make sure that piece of thread stays in the middle, is I'm going to draw all these tips back. I don't want any of those butts in there. I'm going to draw all these tips back, and I want to try to keep them pretty tight here as I go. And I'll cross the thread. I try to keep it over the top where I can keep an eye on it. And I'll make the first segment and make four or five turns of thread there. Uh, we want a prominent yellow segment. And obviously, uh, Danny's from Idaho and uh, obviously fishes the Snake River with this fly. And um, the green drakes there are more yellowy green than, say, Colorado green drakes. Colorado green drakes have more of a brown colored rib. Um, same bug, just a little different color variation. Um, so if you're going to tie this for, for other areas, you might check what color your drakes are. Uh, but in the case of Danny's, they're yellow. So um, I'm going to make that first segment and then I'll cross that thread again on top and make another segment. And ideally, as I do this, I'm trying to make these, these segments descend in size as I go. Um, and you can see I'll just slide my fingers back. Make another segment. And you can see I'm just making enough turns of thread to to create that segment. And then the final segment here is going to be pretty close to the tips. Um, and this was the thing I was kind of figuring out as I was learning this fly, um, is gauging just that right distance where you've got just short little little tips of the hair there for the tail end. So I'll anchor that down tight. Um, the reason I'm using the GSP thread is it just binds this hair down just, just wonderfully. It's very strong. Um, it doesn't, uh, won't cut through the hair if you don't pull too hard on it yourself, but uh, you're not limited by the strength of the thread to get the body built. Um, and I can do with this harder elk rump. Yeah, it works really nicely. Um, so that's sort of an addition that I made. Danny ties these with uh, Danville 6 Ot Light Olive Thread. And honestly, I don't know how he does it. He's, he's Got a lot of practice with these, but um, I found this to be much easier with the uh, with the nano silk. So now I'm going to take my thread and I'll cross forward again to that next segment, and forward again to the next segment. So I'm just coming back to the front end of the needle, so that I've got all those crosses on top, and then I'll come in and whip finish right over these butt ends, or right behind these butt ends, I should say. And you can use your whip finisher there. I'll just use my fingers there. That's handy. And I'll cut that thread out. So now what I'll do is I'm going to grab this body and slide it off the needle. And then I'll take this tag end of this piece of thread that we've got hanging out. And I'm going to pull on it. And that'll draw out the slack that was on the needle for the jam knot that we started. So I'll pull that out. And then I pull it off to one side. And clip that close with a nice sharp pair of scissors. So we've got our extended body. And typically, I'll sit down and, and make all these bodies ahead of time. Uh, probably not a bad idea to do just to kind of gauge your length and, and uh, amount of hair and all that to kind of do them all in a row. Uh, so once I've got that body done, I can actually trim these, these butt ends down here off just a bit. I don't need them quite so long. But I do want to leave a little brush there. We're going to use that to actually attach it to the hook. Uh, so I'll set that aside. We'll take the needle out of my vise. And I'm going to pick up a TMCO 2499 SPBL. And this is in a size 12 is what I'll tie for you here today. Get you a little more centered here. And I'll start that same thread, that same yellow 30 denier nano silk on the hook. Trim that tag end out. And what I want to do here is I want to just kind of stay up on the straight portion of the hook, uh, just back to about where the barb would be. Obviously, this is a barbless hook. Um, but I don't want to come down around the bend. I want to stay up here on the straight part of the hook. And I'll make a thread base there. And then what I'll do before I tie the body in is I'm going to put just a little shot of super glue down on that thread base. And I find this really helps to anchor uh, the body in place, uh, especially with this slick nano silk thread. So now I'll pick up my extended body and I want to find the side that's got all the crosses on it. And I'm going to use that as the top. Um, that way those won't show and we'll have just the, the smooth underside here showing on the bottom. So I'm going to find those crosses. And I'm going to lay this in right at our tie off point and anchor it down with several tight turns of thread. And then keeping the thread tension tight, I'm going to start to walk through these butt ends. And you can see they'll stand up as you go. 
and I'm just moving forward in small increments but with constant tension all the way around the hook. Uh, much like you might do an X caddis. You can see that hair is flaring up as I work through those butts. And that's how we'll attach our, uh, our extended body. Um, so now I'm going to make a little bit of a mess. I'm going to come in with the tips of my scissors and trim all the, all the hair out. I'll just push my thread out of the way so I can get on the bottom. And I don't need that perfectly clean, but I do want it cleaned up a bit. And then I can kind of just clean, clean that up with another layer of thread over it. Now we're about to dub on top of all this, so it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be perfectly clean just yet. Now I'm going to take uh, a little mix of dubbing, and Danny's got a, a special mix that he uses, and uh, that'll be in the recipe uh, at the end of the video here, or, uh, in the magazine. It's just to match the color of the deer hair. And I'm going to take and dub the body, the thorax here, um, fairly tightly. This is a fairly coarse dubbing mix. Um, you know, any variety of dubbing will work, though. Don't feel like you're, you're locked into one magical variety. But I'm going to dub this down fairly tightly on the thread, even though it's a coarse dubbing. And I'm going to work this from just behind the hook eye. Um, and you don't really have to leave yourself very much space there at the hook eye. Um, you'll see as, as we finish this parachute, we're, gonna, uh, we're not going to need very much room there. And I'll dub right up to the to the edge of the front of the body. Um, and now I can see I've got more dubbing than I need, so I'm going to square this thorax off just a bit. You can see I'll tighten that dubbing as I go. And when I get him about where I want him, I'll pull that extra, let me get this where you can see it, pull that extra dubbing off. Let me just pick it off my thread. Tighten up that last turn. <clears throat> and what I want to do is end with bare thread in the middle of the thorax. Um, and just to facilitate the rest of the process here, what I'll do from here, um, I'm going to clean this up just a bit. What I'll do from here is I'm going to make a band of thread right in the middle of the thorax. Um, and that'll create the base for uh, both the wing and the legs that we're about to tie in. So now we're going to come in and find my hackle feather here. Um, Danny ties the hackle in after the fact. I'm going to tie the hackle in beforehand. I just have better luck with it getting anchored in place. Um, but what I've got here is that this is a grizzly dyed yellow. Um, and, you know, appropriately sized for the hook. This is a size 12, so you know, even a 10 or a 12 hackle. But I'm going to strip some barbs on the bottom and then trim them into just short little bristles like so. And the reason you want to do that is so that you've got those little teeth to help hold the feather in place when you tie it in. Um, now this is not done like we'd normally do a, a sort of a conventional parachute um, in that we're going to build a post. We're just going to wrap this around the base of the base of the wing. So um, I want to get this anchored. I go just a little bit off to my near side here and I want to anchor that good and tight. And I tie the feather in with the inside up. So this is the inside of the feather here. Uh, we don't have any chance to turn that. So I, wanna, I want this feather to wrap with the inside up. Uh, so I'm going to tie it in that way. And then I'll take a clump of just uh, cow elk. Uh, nothing special here, just regular natural colored cow elk. And I'll clean it out. And again, you want to make sure you get all the short hairs out of it, any broken tips you want to Try to avoid those if you can. And I'll put this in my stacker. Stack that up nice and neat. We're going to hit that one more time. We've got a couple broken tips in there. And once I've got that stacked nice and clean, I'm going to take this this clump of hair, and I'm going to measure it just to, just about just short of the end of the extended body there. Um, so I'll measure that hair in place there, and then I'll transfer it to my other hand, um, and I like to cut the butt ends off first, and fairly square, as square as I can get them, like so. And then I'll set this hair on top of the hook, and I want to leave fairly long butt ends sticking out the front. I'm going to put two turns around this, and then flare that hair up, and then I can kind of pinch from the bottom and pull down on that thread to flare that hair 
all in place like so. You can see we've got basically an Elk Hair Caddis wing tied in on top there. Nothing fancy there, uh, but we do want to leave these butt ends long enough. To, uh, we're going to use them as the base for the parachute hackle. Um, now the uh, the legs, we're going to use Perfect Rubber, and Perfect Rubber is a, uh, a silicone rubber that floats. So this is uh, an ideal use for, for a material like this on a fly like this, uh, being a dry fly. But this is going to give us a big burly legs that are sort of a uh, trademark characteristic of a green drake. And I'm going to lay, my thread is hanging right, right at this tie down still, I have not moved it forward. So I'm going to lay my thread, or lay my leg in against my near side and catch it with a couple turns. I'll pull it just down below the wing there. Get that anchored in with a couple couple turns. And I'll take and tie one in on the far side. And I'll usually turn that and just make sure I've got everything where I want it. I've got a couple of hairs that I caught there. Trim those out. I'll move that leg just below the, the base of the wing and then tighten those thread wraps up a bit. So we've got these widespread sort of X-shaped legs. Um, and while I'm at it, I'll just trim this leg down just a bit. Now to wrap the hackle, what I want to do is I'm going to kind of lift these butt ends up. You can see I'll just push them back and then I'll pick up the tips of the hair back here. And I want to try to get it all in one, all in one group so that I don't miss any of them. Um, and once you've got a hold of them, you can just start, sort of prop them up, lift them up a bit, um, and they'll stand up. Um, so what I'm going to do tying left-handed is I'm going to wrap this hackle clockwise. So I'm going to come forward and I'm going to come under these butts. So between the butts and the dubbing and under the back of the wing there. And I'm going to go, oh, three or four turns. This feather's not terribly thick. And this method this method of tying a parachute, um, you can see kind of dishevels the hackle. You sort of wrap the hackle through itself because it's in such a tight little area. Um, but that's the idea. The, uh, uh, the ragged hackle is sort of part of the design of this fly. And my thread is still hanging at that same tie down. So once I've got about three turns on there, you can see what I've, what I've got for hackle. I'm going to reach over the vise and pick up my bobbin and continue clockwise um, in between the hackle and the dubbing. I'm trying not to catch my legs here. Just a couple turns, and this is one of the one of the best things about this GSP thread or, or nano silk thread um, is it's very small. Um, so as I come out over the hook eye, I'll drop the thread behind the eye and make a couple turns around the hook. Then I can come in and trim my stem off, my center stem out of my hackle, and sort of preen anything back down into place that got out of whack while I was wrapping that like so. Um, if your butt ends are uneven, you could come in and, and sort of square those up like so. Uh, but what I'll do here, I'm pretty happy with where that's at. So I'm going to come in with my whip finisher and I just set it up and then I'll sweep my fingers under the vise and sweep the hackle out of the way so I can get my whip finish tucked in there behind the eye. And trim that thread out. So now I'm going to trim these legs just short of the end of the body. They're about to that last segment. And the front legs are about that same length. And what we end up with is this, this burly legged uh, green drake pattern, extended body green drake. And uh, uh, this is a, a perfect, perfect spot to use a short hook like this with an extended body. Um, I've always thought that extended bodies on small flies didn't make sense um, in that you'd use a smaller hook to make a, a fly that was already small. In the case of a green drake or a gray drake or a brown drake or even a hex, um, the short hook is going to be smaller or shorter shank hook is going to be much easier to float. There's not going to be so much metal, but it's got a huge wide gap, um, and it it is applicable to this fly because it, it doesn't add weight. Instead of having a, a hook that would be this long, we've got a much shorter hook uh, that's going to hold on to the 
onto the fish a lot better uh, than a longer shake hook would and it's just a perfect application for an extended body um, and you can see some of that hackle is kind of flared down that's exactly what we're shooting for there we want kind of a ragged um, you know almost sloppy hackle so what we've got there is the DJL Drake and Danny ties this in both a uh, green and a brown Drake version but this is a cool little fly that's uh and it's a pretty fun one you know a few different little techniques to go on it as well so um, I hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching I'm Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine mm -hmm.